Hello everyone and welcome to another Flux tutorial. I'm Zach Peterson and today we'll be talking about how you can reuse some of your old KiCad data in your Flux projects. Now, if you've already started making the transition to Flux from KiCad, you probably have a lot of old parts that you want to reuse. Well, lucky for you, Flux does support KiCad parts, and in this video, I'm going to show you how you can migrate your KiCad parts into Flux and start using them in your Flux projects. Make sure to hop into Flux and follow along, and let's get started. To get started converting KiCad to Flux, first you need all of your KiCad data. Uh, you'll need your footprints and 3D models. And you can also import KiCad symbols if you have them in .lib files. So there are a few different ways to do this part creation using your KiCad data. And that's essentially what this process is going to be. We're going to recreate your KiCad parts in Flux. There's a couple different ways to do it. The first way, and probably the easiest way, to get a symbol into Flux is to use this import option inside of the menu in your dashboard. So here, if I go to the import option, you'll see there's an option here for KiCad parts in a .lib format. And if I click on this, you'll see there's an option here to open up a .lib file. So just for fun, I'm gonna select this atmel.lib file. We'll go ahead and open this, and you'll see here that there are multiple options uh, for parts inside this .lib file. Now, if I just click on one of these, what's going to happen is Flux is going to create a new component for that part. So what I mean is it's going to create a blank component that just uses the original symbol that is associated with this part as the symbol for the part in Flux. The other thing that you'll notice here is that all of the pins are also imported and all of that data that was uh, in the original component in the .lib file is preserved here. So you can see all of the pins laid out in the schematic. Now you may need to go through and rename these. You'll notice that here there's just a tilde. Um, you may need to go through and rename these to match the uh, information in the data sheet. Now if you go over here to the PCB, what do you notice? Well, you'll notice here that we just have a bunch of pads for each of the pads that are in our schematic. So they appear overlapped by, like this by default. But uh, if you just have this imported schematic, it won't also import the footprint. So you'll also need to go through and import the footprint. To do that, you can use the assets list. So if you go down here to the assets area in either the schematic editor or the PCB editor, you'll see here that there is an option to add a footprint to this part. Now you'll have to go back to your libraries. You'll see here I have the master libraries from KiCad. And if I go over here, I can then uh, search for the footprint that corresponds to this part. And then I can set all of the pads to the different pins that are in the schematic. Now, what you can also do is, of course, if you have the 3D uh, step files, you can then use those step files for your parts as well. So again, you would just add in the item and then navigate over to the step file for your component. And you can see here that uh, step files, STPs, and steps are supported, as well as your KiCad mod files. So those can all be added as assets to your project. Then once those are added in, you can set those as the footprint or the 3D model, respectively. So before, when I got started, I went to the import option up here from the top menu. However, when I'm inside of a brand new project, I can also access the importer from the top menu. You'll see here when I go to the main menu, go down here to import, there's an option to import KiCad parts. Again, I just navigate over to the area where I have that part and open up the .lib file and the same menu comes up. So just as an example, let's create this one and you'll see here it creates a brand new part. Now, the other thing to note is the symbol. If the .lib file does not contain a symbol, then it will create a default symbol. So here, you see this symbol right here. 
This just represents the pin arrangement, but if I actually look in my dashboard, you'll see that this is the symbol that gets created, and this is attempting to match the pin arrangement in the schematic editor. If there's no symbol data attached to this component, then it's going to just create one of the default flux symbols. So it'll just be one of the default rectangles. So keep that in mind. There should be a symbol contained in that .lib file. But if there is not a symbol contained in that .lib file, that's okay. Flux will just create one of the default symbols for this part. Now, many of the parts in Flux already contain keyCAD footprints. So just as an example, let's go over here to this part, which I've shown in several other videos. Um, this part actually uses a keyCAD footprint. And so if I just scroll down here to the assets area, you can see right here, we have a file that ha is a keyCAD mod file. This is the footprint for this part. And similarly, we also have a step model for uh, this part added into the assets list. Now you'll also notice that there's an SVG file for the symbol. Now, this is important because if you don't have a symbol in a .lib file for this part, you'll have to create an SVG file for this symbol. So the symbol appears over here in this area. So this is the symbol that will appear when you use this part in another project. So this symbol would have to be drawn out manually using something like Inkscape. So if you take a look at our other video on creating custom symbols, you'll see a guide that shows uh, how you can create symbols for your parts, and then you can use them with your KiCad footprints to then create new parts in Flux based on your KiCad data. Now, in some cases, you'll have a symbol contained in the .lib file, but maybe you don't have the footprint. So remember, you can always use a .lib file to very quickly create these new parts with blank footprints, and you can do that for any of the items that are in a .lib file. So that's going to very quickly give you this pin list that you see here in the schematic. However, once you get over to the PCB side, in the PCB, you will then need to manually create the footprint just like you would for any other custom part. So to do that, first you of course have to arrange all of these pads in the proper locations. But then once you arrange the pads, you can use the object specific rules to adjust the pad shape. And of course you can convert them to through hole pads if needed. So to do this, we would uh, hit the edit button, click add. Then we could use the pad shape rule. Uh, we could use the hole rule to uh, place a hole in the pad. We can then apply solder mask expansion around that hole. And then we can use the size rule to adjust the size of these pads. So all of these object specific design rules are going to allow you to adjust these pads so that they are no longer circular and they can be arranged in the correct size and shape that matches the data in the data sheet. Um, once you get that finished, you can uh, go down here to the bottom hit manage under assets, add in that 3D uh, model. And then once you add in that 3D model, you can orient it correctly in the PCB layout. So we have some other uh, videos uh, that show how to do this with creating custom parts. Just make sure you check out the links in the description to learn how to do that. Now, the final thing that you can do in Flux to reuse your KiCad data is sometimes you may want to reuse a KiCad footprint, but with a custom symbol for a new component. Um, so let's take a look at this dummy component just for a moment. So here in this component, I'm adding in some pads. You can see here I've created the custom symbol, but we want, want to reuse one of the KiCad footprints. So to do that, it's actually quite easy. You can see here that I have added a KiCad footprint to the assets list. So to do that, I just go to uh, manage assets, add an item. I would just select the footprint and open it and then it will appear here in this list. So we want to assign this footprint to this custom component that we're creating. So to do that, we need to go over to the PCB side, click the footprint object, and then we need to add the asset rule to the list of object specific rules. So to do that, we just hit edit and then add, and then we'll search for the asset rule if it's not already added. So here it's already been added. And then once we do that, we can just select this footprint from the drop down list. 
and you see it automatically updates the pads to match the arrangement for this footprint. Now one thing you'll notice here is I had a pin one indicator that was placed manually but this is something I would want to of course move over to be closer to the actual pin one value. So I could put it there or I could put it right here. So your keycad component might or might not contain a pin one indicator on the silk screen layer. So if it doesn't, you'll need to add this manually. Now once we've gotten to this point, that's it. We've got our footprint and of course we can then go back to the schematic. We can add in more of these terminals and then we can assign them to the different pads in our keycad footprint. Thanks for watching this video everybody. There is a link in the description to a longer video that shows the entire process for converting KiCad to Flux and it provides a lot more information on the data format used in Flux and how it compares to KiCad as well as the design process once you get everything into Flux. Thanks again for watching everybody. Make sure to subscribe and we'll see you next time.